What's up internet, it's your soul here and just come across this interesting whistleblower testimony from Ana Lucia Alves, a Brazilian model who is uh, retired from being a model now and she's actually a filmmaker and she claims that she got into modeling I believe when she was 18 from Brazil, uh, came to Europe and I think she said she was at Cannes and ultimately very quickly while she was attempting to get work, and actually she says scouting for other models, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but regardless, basically she, she found herself very quickly surrounded by uh, top celebrities, movie stars, and so on, basically because of her face, it would seem, and um, you know, it just had a sort of a so-called exotic look that people liked, kind of a, a catwalk model look, and uh, so she describes meeting Harvey Weinstein, the alleged uh, mass abuser of women uh, in Hollywood, and having met him several times. She she also says that she was a uh, mother and very kind of hard-headed and not easy to push around. And she describes how ultimately many of the women there were prostituted out exactly in the kind of way that people have described uh, Jeffrey Epstein doing, which is Lane Maxwell. Um, but it goes a bit further than that. It goes quite a lot deeper. She's actually describing the kind of scenario that many people have talked about being real. Um, usually people online, when they talk about this stuff, or even in books or wherever, they, they tend to, well, often they use the word Illuminati. And you know, many people laugh when they hear that word because they say, oh, that was a group that doesn't exist anymore, and so on and so on and so on. I find it a bit strange that people say that. Whether or not the group does or doesn't exist, it is a bit strange saying, oh, I definitely know it doesn't exist. I mean, how can you know a secret group doesn't exist? It's completely ridiculous. But anyway, setting that aside, she's basically talking about how in the so-called upper echelons of the entertainment industry and related industries, basically it's very much like organized crime uh, fraternities or gangs or families. And many people there are really operating like the mafia. And in fact, she, she does say that she even had contact with the real, genuine Italian mafia, offering to uh, marry her into that family and to give her Ferraris and all that kind of stuff. Um, but basically, the, the, the sort of story here is that she was surrounded at various points by, you know, top Hollywood actors and so on. And more than once, she was, she says she was basically tested to see. Uh, she worked out over the years that they, they test people to find out how far the person's willing to go in certain senses, uh, how corruptible they are, and so on. And she describes how she was, ultimately, at the end of the story, she describes being offered uh, a mansion, basically, or an expensive property that she had to populate with girls who would then act as prostitutes for politicians and other characters of that nature who would come and uh, have sex with them and be supplied with alcohol and drugs and so on, whatever they wanted. And she turned that down. Um, she also described kind of having to fake Harvey Weinstein to not go off with him. I think it was him or one of those characters anyway, to sort of avoid basically being lured into a trap, as she, as she perceived it. So in her in her mind, she's gone through these various stages of trying to be corrupted by these people and having to defend against them. And she says that she was a mother early on and wanted to have her own business and she ended up making films. So, you know, she found her own way out. She wasn't like a kind of destitute um, teenager who had no alternatives and was suddenly offered a million dollars. Um, one of the things I found interesting in this case is that she actually mentions people like Leonardo DiCaprio and those kinds of characters and says that basically they are just handled just like any other star. They're not really, um, you know, this genius... Um, activist stroke great person who you know is leading the world in xyz basically they're, they're there as a kind of puppet and um although she says leonardo dicaprio she believes is actually genuinely a kind of a good guy she described him as being a bit childish and um basically a puppet so she, she talks about how they have um within these groups a kind of um, requirement to do a minimum amount of charity work and so on that's aimed at achieving certain political agendas. So when you see him getting on this carbon um, reduction bandwagon and so on, she's basically saying, look, this is it's just stage management. It's just theatre. It's not really a real thing from his perspective. Um, 
So I found that interesting, but but the real story here, in a, I would say, is that she's she's describing in graphic detail and quite good depth how these groups perceive the exploitation of models and actresses and so on as normal for them, and you know it's the story that's being told about um, Epstein pimping out these girls to his friends really just mirrors what she experienced in that industry, and. Ultimately, although she she's not necessarily talking about underage children um, and so on, she is basically t- talking about the same story, uh, with the slight difference, I suppose, that uh, Epstein seems to have been specifically doing what he was doing to blackmail people, whereas she's describing something which may or may not involve blackmail, but generally seems to just be prostitution and uh, generally just the idea of exploiting these people. And as I said, she does mention... She says at one point she was married to somebody who had a title and was obviously very wealthy. Um, but, you know, at that level is very much, I think, like a business deal, marriages. It's not really got much to do with love, I think. Um, and she talks about, as I said, that this mafia character at some point coming up to her and basically saying, you know, marry into our family if you like and we'll give you everything you can ever dream of. Um, and she turned him down. So, yeah, I definitely recommend listening to this woman and i'm going to play a few clips here and uh yeah definitely one to add to the whistleblower list for steam and in general you know going back to that whistleblower list which i highly recommend you check out the index for that is beneath this video uh the most of the early posts were text only and there's i think close to 40 there's close to 40 now whistleblowers we're up to about 40 now in the whistleblower list and if i'm certain that if most I'm certain that if the world in general were to spend a few days listening to these whistleblowers, most of whom they've never heard of, the world would change very quickly because there's so much amazing information in there that's credible that that is so clear and so hard to refute and rebut and there's so much evidence to back up what they're saying that it just destroys the lies that we've been told through the mainstream for so long. Um, just as an example, you've got the inventor of the U-2 spy plane in there talking about um, technology from extraterrestrials that he's, he knows exists and that is used basically by the U.S. military. We've got U.S. military whistleblowers like Scott Bennett um, talking about how the CIA has funded ISIS through Swiss banks. Uh, there's another CIA um, so-called asset there, Cinder Lindau, Sandra Lindauer, uh, who was uh, very active during the 9-11 Gulf War events, basically working for the U.S. government with Iraq, and she eventually actually got put in prison to try and silence her and drugged because she was speaking out against their crimes and so on. Um, it just goes on and on. And as I said, there's 40 or so in there. And, you know, even if 50% of them are, are lying, then the remain, remaining 50% is still enough to change the world drastically. And I personally don't think most of them are lying. And I don't actually think any of them are lying. But, um, yeah, please do go and check those out when you get some time and share them on with your friends as well because it's uh, it's really amazing stuff in there. So anyway, here's uh, here's some clips from this video. Go ahead. Well, so let's talk, because you and I have talked a lot about the concept of handlers. And the concept of handlers is something, again, the the mass consciousness is just... Star- we've, we've all thought we have these celebrities and we have these people in our society whose names we know you know, and Kanye tweeted a year ago, no more handlers, I'm free. Like, but what is your experience with this? And what are these handlers? And is this real? Yes, I can guarantee that they are real because I had one. Um, I actually, I believe now because it takes some time for you to understand what they are and how they infiltrate in your life. I had two of them. Um, one came in and out of my life very quickly and the second one who is a pedophile he is being looked after um, the police is looking for him uh, he's not um, found yet I don't know because you know the police we never know what they're up to but <laughs> I grew up in Brazil so we we don't know but um, but so this, this is a very solid business. This is multi-billion dollar business a year. It's not a joke. So being a handler. Yes, because what happens is this, when you have youngsters who are making, and I know a girl now, daughter of a friend who is making 
I mean, she's probably making $200 million a year mm -hmm. and she's in her early 20s. She's in the music industry and she's got two persons that, you know, one is the agent, one is the manager. And if those two cannot handle you properly, they will send you a third person. Mm -hmm. So they want to invest your money. They want, you know, the moment I start making big money, it was like, oh, here's where you're going to put it. You're going to do this and that and the other. And then when you, I was not handled. I was not a person that could be handled because <laughs> I, I, very big strong background of independence mm -hmm. and entrepreneurial family. So right. it was like, no, I'll, I'll decide what I do with my money. So what they do is that they send a friend. So these people, they use a psychology and they use many other techniques to get into your life. They get into your life very quickly and they become all of a sudden your best What happens is that the moment they become your best friend and I even one of them was a roommate of mine, is that they start parting you with your family and with your best friends. So very quickly, the intrigue and the manipulation goes to such a deep level where you are actually alone. When you are alone and nobody is your friend anymore and you have only this person to rely on, that's when they really got a grip on you and then they are your best friend, your confidant your investor and they would just you know some of them you, you know use drugs uh, well and you know, these are all mk ultra techniques these are all techniques that are used in mind control and in cults so it's isolation it's yes. chemicals it's yes. manipulation psychological warfare yes and they are very expert at it i remember uh my handler um, he was, uh, he spoke five languages wow. like I do now, but he spoke, he immediately understood that I missed my father a lot because we were very close. So he immediately put him in a, in a position of fatherhood that he, you know, all the, and very quickly within like 10, 12 days, I remember because looking back, it's different now, but in 10, 12 days, he was in my life completely. He took my money. He was wow. deciding what I was going to do when I was going to New York, when I was going here and there. And, and I was practically, if I was not strong enough with the family I've got and the training I had as an in entrepreneurial and independent woman, right. I would probably be dead by now because he would have, you know, used that period of my life. I could most likely probably become a top model or even farther down the road because then they start giving you vogue and etc and then you become this huge thing and then within three four years if you do not turn even better to continue in some bigger business of maybe pedophilia or whatever service you're going to give you 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 know you get an overdose or you die or you kill yourself or something you know it, it's 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 clear that it's not going to end well so this is just when you look around and you see these celebrities and you see how some of their lives play out, you see the opportunities that some get, you know exactly what you're looking at because yes. you've experienced, you know, they bring you into it. I think you said to me, they test you slowly. So they get you handled and they put, they insert a handler into your life and then they test you slowly. Yes. As they will, what they will do. Slowly, yeah. They will slowly, slowly learn how far you will go. We are willing to go. So then there's like this big event. For example, I remember in Paris, there was this huge event I went to. Um, fabulous. You know, the whole upper, upper French Parisian society was there, you know. And, and it, I mean, events that, you know, uh, only Johnny Depp or Bono or Giselle Bouchon is, is, you know, is invited. It's, right. it's about 30 round tables, fabulous place. And, uh, and then 
as you know, when you are in an event, you just like you break out, you leave your table, you know, the tables have names on it and everybody knows everybody's name and I'm this and I'm that and I am like, you know, uh, Carla Garfeld or I'm this and the other. All these people were there. It was very high end. And then I went, I broke away from the event and um, literally I am in this room and this woman comes up to me and she tries to kiss me. And I'm like, no. So slowly so that is reported it's like well she is not going to do this and she's not going to do that and then slowly they frame you in a way where it's like you know this girl is just not going to do the, the. and even in 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 khan uh three years later i'm still in touch with harvey because i i stated that i was a professional that i was making movies and i had this script and i was writing another one or whatever and um, so I was still invited because he was also, you know, testing the waters. And one time there was, um, I remember the movie Velvet Goldmine with Ewan McGregor. And I was in this small part. I mean, now you're talking about 200 people invited after the film in Cannes showed into right. this party. Within 200 people, there was a back room where Sharon Stone was and a few other big names um and harvey was in there and, and there there was two huge bodyguards and there's no way i would get in there and i was just curious you know i'm like 28 i'm like oh what's right. going on? you know but uh no there was no way i was getting into that room because you hadn't progressed to the point where they you know you were being herded into a certain echelon and you weren't passing the test that you didn't know you were being given absolutely well, then, yeah I so interesting. Glad, regarding harvey then i there was an event um i was in invited to a very small dinner table with him and leo DiCaprio was there i had met leo before as well leo leo is a, he's an adorable kid and totally in a in a in a, a groomed uh, unfortunately he's he's a good guy but he's groomed i don't think he can even see what he's doing um but um but leo was trying to say let's get out of here and we were in this table with harvey and and but not, I, I just want to clarify not in a sexual way he wasn't saying let's get out of here it was no 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 not at all it was like it was kind of like a kid it was i was already a mother i was married yeah. so i was really there for business it was like an early dinner at like le coste hotel if you know paris it's like the the shishi thing so i'm there and i went because i was invited and i thought yeah and, you know this is an opportunity i'll see harvey again and stuff right. so harvey comes late with a actress that had been big before so mm -hmm. he walks in with her I don't have to say much more about that, but he walks in with her and Leo is sitting there and we are all waiting for him to have dinner. So he doesn't, uh, we don't order dinner within 20 minutes. I see nobody is asking for a menu. I'm going to leave. And I say, well, bye, bye, Leo, you know, gotta go, whatever, it's getting late. And then he's like, oh, but I thought we would, you know, let's go, you know, somewhere. It was almost like, he was like, please take me with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I want, I want out of the situation. It's a very oppressive vibe. You know, it's a very controlling and and oppressive place to be, where you know you have no wiggle, and they are going to make you, you know, do whatever they want you to do. You, you're not free. So these people just use him as an example. You have to assume because you know this system that they are isolated and they are handled and they are groomed and they are being controlled. So when we see them doing social and political things, it's not like these are just their own thoughts or their own ideas to do these things. That's ridiculous. If we, if we were to even think that that's absolutely ridiculous, they don't have that power, right? In no, they don't. they don't. And, and if they do, if they wish to do something that they really truly believe in, they are not going to be allowed. I'll right. tell you why. I, I, Leo, I met him many, many times, and I even had his latest email, and I communicated with him regarding a movie I want to do documentary about the Amazon. Mm 
Uh, and I know the story because I was born in Brazil and I have somebody who studied the whole thing and I'm partner with this, this uh, writer. He writes for what is equivalent to the New York Times in Brazil, you know, Folha de São Paulo, and it's huge. So I know the backstory and I know what's really going on there. And Leo has no understanding Mm -hmm. Although he is preaching, you know, oh, let's save the earth and this and the other. When we look in the carbon tax and everything that is going on, it's like, please, you know, give me a break. I'm not that stupid. Uh, I'm not stupid at all. But it's like, you know, anybody who is like kind of a little bit in the, in the, in the, sh in the shade yet, like trying to discover what's going on, it's very clear. Leo has no clue. Mm -hmm. What happens to Leo is that they are giving what I believe uh, not only Leo, but most of them, they're giving a quota kind of thing. It's like, this is what you're going to do as a charity thing. Right. And if Naomi Campbell, and you can mention anybody, De Niro, you name it, they all have this thing that they have to participate in to promote what has been given to them to promote, including George Clooney and all this. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Because if you study what is actually going on in geopolitics and in the Amazon, it's nothing like what they are saying. And you just have to know for yourself. And these people don't know, I mean, they're virtually puppets. So they're puppets yeah. of another agenda, another, an invisible hand of power that we don't see. They're puppets yeah. of that. Yes. And they might even believe what is said sometimes to see, even in the case of Leo, they might even believe because, you know, he's representing the UN. And you see, like the Wizard of Oz, if you don't pull the curtain, you think you're doing the right thing. So I have a lot of compassion for these people because they really believe that something is wrong with the planet. And it's like, we're going to die. You know, this Greta girl is like, it's, it's insane what they're doing to her. You look in her eyes, it's like wow. she's fully drugged. And, and it's so sad that they go that far, you know, it's Bernays, it's propaganda. It has been studied and, and, propagated for centuries these people it's not a joke you know it's serious business it's millions of dollars and when they don't find a way to make money um, easily just by selling products like we would hope they will find some scam and that's what they do too. and this is also about social and political control ultimately. Absolutely. right right this is so explosive and I, honestly, this interview is so informative for people. People are gonna need to watch this interview like multiple times because you're actually saying so much. You're really saying so much and putting so many pieces together. Hannah, that we've had to sort of stab in the dark and really just try to figure out because we don't have a lot of people like you coming forward. So I thank you for that. We don't have a lot of people like you coming forward and saying on the record, this is what you're looking at. This is yeah. what this actually is because we're being so intentionally misled and confused. So I just want to thank you for that. I want to get you <laughs> really honestly, um, yeah. we're, we're, cause we're all sort of trying to put things on the record, right? For the collective so that we can all understand what is this illusion that we've been living under? What is this? What is, what are these celebrities? Why are they all a bunch of mockingbirds? What's happening? It's not what we've been told, right? And we, yes. we have that figured out, but we need these pieces. And that's what you're doing today. And I, I really appreciate that. And I applaud yeah. you. So I want to get into really quick. What is the, you, you spoke, we were speaking briefly um, about Naomi Campbell because I've been really digging into her and digging into once she was named in the unsealed Epstein documents and the child sex slave who was being deposed in these court documents said that she met Heidi Klum and she met Naomi Campbell. And there are pictures of all of this that we're now getting. And I called you and I asked you about Naomi Campbell and what your thoughts were on that. And we started talking about what she might really be. And then you told me about an offer that you had received. And I found this to be, again, like such an important part for the record because we don't know. And no one like you is going to come out and tell us for fear of losing their place, which you're ready to just build something new. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So, so what is this offer that you received that might shed some light on 
these people like Heidi Klum and Naomi Campbell? Sure. Um, being, you see, when you are in a group of people and you have reached a place where you have fame, some fame, uh, very easily you are dealing with politicians. Are you mentioning the politician thing mm -hmm. that happened in Paris? Yes. So you were, you know, you you come out and you have a standard life. So I got married. Um, I had a child at the time. I started my production company. I was a professional, very doing, doing great. I was doing great. And, um, but then my marriage collapsed and my marriage collapsed. And um, I found myself into like, okay, now I have to, you know, start over. So I continue seeing the same friends and then now I got a boyfriend, a, a different person. And this friend of mine, um, I was dating him. He took me to this party and I met this very high placed politician in Paris. I think he was like a governor or something. I don't know the name in French now, but something very high, like a governor or something like that, or House of Lords or whatever. And so... He really liked me. He knew I spoke already three languages. You know, I was already a woman. I'm not a girl anymore. I'm 28, uh, 29. And, uh, you know, and he knew I was dating this boy. And uh, he was a lot of fun. But, you know, it's like you're kind of on a diff different platform. I'm a mother. I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. So this man said, you know, I have a proposition for you. I have a, a job for you that would be, you know, maybe you would be interested. I said, so... I say, well, yeah, I'm looking for something, you know, big while I build my, my production company. So we went out for tea and to make a long story short, this was the proposition. It was, we will give you a hotel particulier, which means a whole building of six floors in probably one of the best neighborhoods in Paris. There's just six floors, beautiful, big rooms, high ceilings, gorgeous. We will give you everything you need, um, including maybe a diplomatic paper, whatever I needed, although I was, I could just become French if I wanted to at the time, but I didn't bother. And so what we will need is you to bring eight to ten girls um, for living in this house and you don't have any problem with you know drugs and alcohol we understand and then he was kind of like just testing the waters and saying no Brazilians they're very open and they're very nice and you know whatever and he was but literally the job was you know a madame uh, it would be my house it would be my job to receive politics of a very high level and uh, provide them, you know, ladies and whatever else they want to consume. Again, Anna, this is such an important interview for the record, and I don't want to like understate that because what you're piecing together are pieces that we don't yet have. So you're talking about a highly placed politician who is essentially propositioning you to set up a brothel to yes. set up for you to be a madam yes to give you a diplomatic passport to say that you were not going to have any trouble with any drugs or alcohol that you you know people were consuming exactly. this property to give you a building yes in paris which is probably millions of dollars yes totally yeah. this is not is explosive i mean this is a big piece of the puzzle so is it fair to say some of these more successful models and more successful actresses and actors they might be taking part in they might might be taking part in things like this i wouldn't pass it by i think what is important to clarify is that like you like you put in together a puzzle there's always a species meaning that because I said no to that, you know, the next proposition was, because you are navigating in a different platform, the next proposition was marry an Italian son of a mafiosi. You know, you were talking about Ferraris and big 
lake, Como houses and all that. It's like no worries about it. it. They are very clear. It's not like they're not joking. They don't have time to waste. It is like, do you want this or not? He never saw me again. I had no interest myself. I said, no, thank you very much, you know, uh, to both things. But when you're navigating in that platform, they will come to you openly. Okay, so I trust you can see there that, you know, she seems genuine, I would say. And obviously she could be lying, she could be an actress, but I don't really see what she has to gain from lying about this. And uh, what she's saying totally fits in with so many other testimonies. And the modus operandi of these people is fairly clear. Um, you know, the things that I saw and heard growing up amongst not even super wealthy elite people, just even just fairly average people about how they thought about other people and how they would mistreat them and so on. I always wondered why there weren't more people speaking out about this kind of thing because it seemed to be so prevalent. And, and it, you know, it's clear that this occurs also at the top level, so-called the wealthiest levels, let's say, of society. Um, we need more people speaking out about it, basically. And this is probably the only whistleblower I can think of from that, those kinds of circles, celebrity circles, who um, has described prostitution of this kind as being a norm. I've seen the, the documentary from the 80s, 60 Minutes, exposing Jean-Luc Brunel, who's now gone missing, um, or in hiding, more likely. Uh, you can also watch the uh, whistleblower testimonies from Isaac Cappy, the Hollywood actor who talked about other actors and Steven Spielberg even being child abusers, and then mysteriously he committed suicide a few weeks later uh, after saying that he wasn't suicidal. So, yeah, please do look into all this stuff. It's very serious, and you know this isn't just a bit of mindless entertainment. This is attempting to protect what could be your children or your friends' children or you know innocent people around the world from basically being predated upon by people who have amongst who are amongst those who have the most wealth and are even venerated as heroes and icons a lot of the time. You know things couldn't really get much more backward than that. So you know I'd like to uh, leave this world. Uh, in a more balanced state than I found it. So, you know, if that's something you'd like to do too, then uh, please do uh, follow along here and, uh, you know, drop us some comments and help us out in that process and share along with your friends. If you're on Steam, give us an upvote uh, if you can and uh, a thumbs up on YouTube and so on. Please do subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube if you're new. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.